Today I'm taking a look at the band Dive and their 2024 album Frog in Boiling Water. This has been one of my most anticipated new albums of 2024, but the question remains, does it hold up to my expectations? Let's find out. Who is Dive? Dive, spelled D-I-I-V, is an American indie rock band founded in Brooklyn, New York in 2011. Initially conceived as the solo project of Zachary Cole Smith, the band's vocalist and guitarist, Dive quickly evolved into a full-fledged band. Their music blends elements of shoegaze, dream pop, indie rock, and it's characterized by lush, reverb-heavy guitar textures. You could say their sound is heavily influenced by 1980s post-punk and shoegaze bands like The Cure, My Bloody Valentine, and Slow Dive. It often features intricate guitar interplay, hypnotic rhythms, and a generally atmospheric vibe. Frog in Boiling Water is the band's 2024 album, but it's far from their first. With over a dozen years as a band, let's take a quick look back at previous albums. Previous albums by Dive. Dive debuted in 2012 with the album Ocean, which received quite the critical acclaim for its dreamy soundscapes and melodic guitar work. Blending the dreamy, reverb-laden elements of shoegaze with traits of mildly melodic but angular post-punk, quite signature to other bands on the Captured Tracks label, looking back now I hear parallels to artists like Beach Fossils, in particular their early work from the early to mid-teens, and then Craft Spells. But of course, with a little bit more shoegaze leaning. Next, they released Is The Is Are in 2016. Again, critical acclaim, this time exploring darker themes with more depth. For this one, they tapped Chris Cody, who has worked with the likes of Grizzly Bear and Beach House. It maintained a lot of the familiar shoegaze influences, but did so with greater complexity. The band's third album, Deceiver, was released in 2019, and it was probably their most personal and emotional release yet, with frontman Zachary Cole Smith kind of in the midst of a period of sobriety that influenced thematic elements within the album. Still in the throes of the shoegaze resurgence, Deceiver is heavier and a bit more grunge-laden. At least some of this might be attributed to producer Sonny DiPieri, who worked with the Nine Inch Nails and Proto Martyr. And that brings us to 2024, Frog in Boiling Water. Delayed slightly by the pandemic, there has always been something existential about the music of Dive, and in many ways it's never been more apparent or blatant than in the band's latest release, Frog in Boiling Water. Continuing its descent into darkness, I'd argue that this is their darkest and most introspective work yet. Yet there's also an ascent, climbing to new atmospheric heights. Part commentary on the sadness epidemic, post the pandemic, and part a foreboding prediction of our societal collapse with a specific focus on the detrimental impacts of late stage capitalism, this album is truly haunting. For Frog in Boiling Water, Dive once again taps the musical production genius of Chris Cody. Before even digging into Cody's quite extensive list of projects, I had already pulled out two albums from last year that I absolutely love to put this album next to in terms of influence, greatness, musical style, and in a sense, you know, true parallel sounds due to that dreamy nature of all three combined. First is Everything is Alive by Slow Dive, and for the second, it's Sit Down for Dinner by Blonde Redhead, both top 10 albums for me last year. Cody has worked with both bands, first on Blonde Redhead's phenomenal LP, 23, from 2007, and then on Slow Dive's return with their 2017 self-titled release. Like these albums, Frog in Boiling Water has this dualistic nature to it, one part terrifying in its emotional depth and political statements, and another part reveling in occasionally pleasant and calming atmospheric melodies. 
So, is the new Dive album any good? I already noted it's been one of my most anticipated albums of 2024, and I can't really say that without elaborating a little bit. The band dropped a few early singles, in fact, half the album prior to its release in late May, which merely served to continually hype up the album more and more for me. Brown Paper Bag and Everyone Out were immediate favorites, Play after play, they just dominated my Spotify lists. SoulNet, with its deeper commentary on capitalism, which I mentioned before, also pulled me into its depths. Let's also take a little bit deeper dive into the track list. Another early single was Raining on Your Pillow, which doesn't nearly feature as much of the shoegaze influence as some of the other songs on the album, but still has a truly amazing dreaminess to it. And then there's the title track, Frog in Boiling Water, which kind of follows suit. Ethereal, atmospheric, but not overly deafening in its shoegaze sounds. I'm still working my way through the depths of some of the songs on the B-side, Reflected, which opens that side of the album, Somber, The Drums, same thing, Little Birds, and Fender on the Freeway. All of these songs are not nearly the powerhouses of those early singles, but they still hold solid weight on the album nonetheless. If you dig into an album like Everything is Alive or Sit Down for Dinner, you'll find that both of those albums flow very, very nicely from beginning to end. You have the diversity of Everything is Alive, which has some powerful tracks. You've got some very catchy melodies, and you have some subtle low points that counterbalance the heavier shoegaze sounds. On Sit Down for Dinner, it's just one track after another of great tunes. This one kind of finds a middle ground in between. You have the softer side of the closing track, Fender on the Freeway. You have the political commentary on the swirling soul net. You have Everyone Out and Brown Paper Bag, both which have very great hooks and memorable melodies. And you have other tracks that counterbalance all of that, like Opener in Amber, with heavier sounds and bigger noise-ridden melodies. All of this sums up a great addition to anyone who likes dream pop, shoegaze, and atmospheric rock music. I like Dive quite a bit, but I have no qualm saying that Frog in Boiling Water is, hands down, their best work yet. There's almost no comparison. The album flows impeccably from the heavier, brooding opener in Amber to the softer, subtler, and more mellow outro Fender on the Freeway. Don't be surprised if this makes it to a lot of best of lists come year's end, mine included. And speaking of, coming up soon here on the Fence Post Vinyl Channel, as we're pretty much at the cusp of mid-year 2024, I'll be sharing my top 10 albums of 2024 so far, so you'll want to stick around for that. Until then, as one commenter stated a while back, this dude is a damn nerd. I am Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.